Glen FM on 105 FM. Your community, your music. It's the Andy Snowden Radio Show. Show. 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 I love that too much. That is uh, Brit Award nominee uh, Kate Tempest. It's called The Beigeness. Beautiful. Uniting our community. On 105 FM. Canon FM. So here we go, round two, ding ding. What is going on in and around the Wrexham area? I hear you chow. Now, we've heard from Chubby Brown uh, in the first hour of the show, but uh, anybody that wants a little bit of culture, they better pop themselves up to Theatre Cluid, haven't they? That's what you need to do. Theatre Cluid has got it going on at this present time. And uh, on tonight, and closing this evening, actually, A Midsummer Night's Dream uh, by William Shakespeare, but a fantastic contemporary uh, take on it from the Lyric Hammersmith and uh, Filter Theatre production team. It's called The Midsummer Night's Dreams by William Shakespeare. You've all heard of it. I don't think anybody will have seen a version quite like this. I can't tell you enough. Just grab your coat, get up to Theatre Cluid, get yourself a ticket. That's what you've got to do. And also as well, uh, next week in that exact same theatre, the, uh, the Anthony Hopkins Theatre, we've got the touring production of The Turn of the Screw. Now, uh, this features uh, Carly Norris. Uh, fans of EastEnders might know Carly Norris as uh, Belinda Peacock. And uh, Maggie McCarthy as well, a regular on Call the Midwives. They are in this brand new production of uh, Turn of the Screw and it's, uh, it's coming up to Theatre Cluid. It's coming up to Theatre Cluid next week, the 1st of May until the 5th of May. So you haven't got much chance to go and see it. I'll give you all the, uh, the, the details on how to get uh, tickets for this one straight after we hear from Carly Norris and Maggie McCarthy. Here they are. It, it always to me sounds like a really nice job to be on tour. Is it as good as it sounds? Do you know when it suits you, it's when you're either very, very young and have no ties at all, or you're, you're older and you have no ties at all. Yeah. But when you're kind of middle-aged, like I am, with two small children and several hundred fingers in several hundred pies at home, yeah. it can be quite um, frantic when you're away and trying to run several businesses and worrying about your home and your children at school and everything else. So um, it, it can be a bit fraught for, there, there's, a, there's a time in an actress's or an actor's life where they kind of they're, they're not brilliant tourers however i am having a, a fantastic time and actually before we left uh, we were discussing as a as a as a, a company what we were going to be doing and, and i i said oh well when we go on holiday i mean tour uh, and they all laughed at me and i said well no you don't have any idea what my life is like it's yeah. going to be a holiday for me <laughs> yeah but so, yeah, time away from home. It's, it's nice visiting, uh, going up and down the country, staying staying in various places and seeing things that you wouldn't necessarily go off and see otherwise. That's right. I mean, do, do you get to see... I mean, have you played Theatre Cluid before? I've never played Theatre Cluid, but I have um, I have spent a lot of my... My, my first marriage uh, for ten years, I spent a lot of time going up and down the motorway to Rill, which is where my first husband's um, parents lived. Yeah. It's beautiful up there, but I've never been to theatre, so I'm very much looking forward to this. It is a... It's a it, well, it's a, it's a stunning view of... Oh. Uh, I think it's the best view from any theatre. I shall bring my paint palette, then. <laughs> That's what you should do. Pad. Yeah. <laughs> now, I, I've read somewhere that... Um, I mean, strange as it sounds, you were about to buy tickets to go and see this. Yes, I was. I, I was, um, I'd been asked to, to uh, be in the pantomime at the uh, Mercury Theatre in Colchester. Right. And I was going along for a meeting, and as I walked into the foyer, I saw a poster for Turn of the Screw, and I said to my husband, oh, we must buy tickets for that. It's a really, really brilliant play. And uh, he said, oh, and I almost bought the tickets, um, but, they, but they weren't on sale at that point. It, they were just, you know, they were, they were promoting the show. Yeah. Um, and I did the panto, and on the opening night of the panto, the, the producer came up to me and said, can I ask you a question? W- would you like to do some real acting? <laughs> some serious <laughs> acting. And um, asked me to, to, to um, go for the governess, and I did. And, I've, and I'm thrilled, and, I, and I haven't looked back since. Yeah. 
because I mean, I, I mean, everybody's going to know you from from EastEnders, of course. Yeah. Um, do you think that's an important thing for a, a production of this sort of? I mean, to, to be touring around the country, to, to, is is that important to get people recognisable faces in the, in a production like this? Well, we did, this is this is a well known play um, for a certain uh, type of person, so somebody who likes reading books and knows a lot of history and, and uh, of um, novels and things like that. But um, I think I think sometimes it is important, yes, maybe um, to get more people that don't often go to the theatre if they know that there's a recognisable face going to be performing live on the stage. Yeah. Um, it does get people through the door. Um, but I think that this piece itself, because it's such a small cast as well, you know, um, I think that the writing is incredibly good. Um, the story is incredibly good. Everyone can kind of relate to it. Yeah. Um, so um, I, I, I don't know, I'm, 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 you know, I'm on the cusp of that. But when I see, if there's a poster and I see somebody that I've recognised from the television that I lo- I, and I like them as an actor, I will generally go and say, oh, yeah, maybe I'll go and see that and see what they're like um, performing live. Yeah. Yeah, I think you're right. Because I think we all, you know, it doesn't matter if you're in the business or not, I think we all go into the theatre, we get our programme, we have a little scan through, see what people have done. Yeah. And if you've been on TV, it's a bonus for some weird reason. I know, it's and odd, isn't it? But I don't I know think why. when you're on the television, you're kind of in people's lounges. It's a lot more intimate. Yeah. And uh, people feel like they know you and they know, you know, and especially if you've got, you know, I have got some fans um, dotted up and down the country who know a bit more about me than I think maybe they should. Yeah. <laughs> so that, that, that's interesting when I meet them after the show. And uh, But, um, no, yeah, I think, I think you know, being on TV, it does help. It, does, it helps to, to get bums on seat sometimes. Yeah. Because your character, I mean, obviously, it's a, the, the bigger the character, the more people think they know it. Exactly. Um, and, uh, you know, EastEnders, any of the soaps, they're huge. They're, they're a big part of a lot of people's lives. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I think that they're, they're kind of more accessible. And it's more surprising when you see me walking down the street that I'm not on your television. Um, <laughs> yeah. that, that surprises some people. But, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So I'll have to ask, is there chances of you going back? I know you've already done a stint back in it. Well, the character never died a possibility of going back but um, I, you know I don't know she, she's off in Italy at the moment I mean the rest of her sisters have gone back and yeah. they're, they're, the door's open but um, you know you never know what's around the corner so I, I've got quite a busy life um, in every other aspect so Perfect. we don't know we don't know what, what's going to happen yeah fantastic well we had uh, Tony Discipline in uh, uh, pantomime up here at Christmas right. you, you know Tony Discipline I, I don't know. Well, there you go. That's showbiz for you, isn't it? He was in, <laughs> <laughs> he was in you know EastEnders. I don't watch television. And I, you know, I'm, I'm far too busy doing other things. Yeah. Terrible well, it's to funny. Because I should be watching television. But um, I don't actually get time. I get to see the old film every now and again, but I don't, I don't yeah. know a lot of, um, you know, uh, actors, uh, TV actors' names. Yeah. But I think I know... I, I dip in and out of things like that. Yeah. And, you know, if a story's, if a story's sort of... You know, when, when I lived in London... Um, we watched these standards all the time. Right. We, we moved back to North Wales, and I, I, I don't think I've watched it for ten years. So no, 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 no. I, Just I, find, I find it quite depressing sometimes watching other people's problems. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> watching other people working. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, shall I? Uh, I'll have a quick chat with Maggie if that's all right. Okay, I'll put you over. Perfect. Lovely to speak to you. Yeah. Then you. Bye bye. Take care. Cheers. Bye. Hello. Hi, Maggie. How are you? Uh, I'm alright, thank you. How are you? Marvellous, marvellous. How's the tour going for you? Uh, it's, I'm enjoying it, thank you. Excellent, yeah. excellent. Do you enjoy life on the road? I do quite, yes. Yeah. I, have to say, I, haven't, I hadn't done any for years, and when I started, um, I did a tour again about two and a half years ago and wondered whether I was really going to enjoy it. But yeah. Actually, I do. Yes, it's yeah. great fun seeing different places. Marvellous. And and different theatres. And you've been you've been to Theatre Clue before, have you not? I have very recently. In fact, my first visit to Theatre Clue was last year. What was the play? It was a play called Heroin. That's right. That's um, right. It couldn't be more different. Yeah. From the one I'm doing at the moment. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So I didn't speak to you after Heroin, did I? No, I don't think you spoke to me then. No. No, because I, I, I spoke to. Oh, it was the young girl that was in it. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. And, That's right. Yeah. And she, um, she was uh, the, the that play was excellent. It was, a, it was a fascinating, brave piece, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, 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 absolutely. And Theatre Clue is doing some excellent work at this moment, actually. Well, it's, 
screamed. Uh, it, yeah, it is, and it, it's really buzzing, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, I yes. All the touring shows, all the in-house productions, they yeah, all, they all seem to be... really fantastic. It's a fantastic place. Yeah, excellent. Can you give us a quick synopsis of this one? Well, it's based on the Henry James story, as, as you know. Yeah. And um, uh, this is a new adaptation, in fact. It's been adapted many times. It's been, apparently, I didn't know this till we rehearsed, but apparently Woman in Black was inspired by it. Um, the Innocence, uh, the film... Um, is based on the story and the others um i've just been prompted with that one because i've forgotten that one <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah so this is a new adaptation but the, the the basic story is the same so in our adaptation you meet uh, a governess in 1870 who is being interviewed for a job um and uh the person she's being interviewed by um takes her back to 1840 to her very first job, uh -huh. um, which is the Henry James story, where uh, as a very young woman and as her first job, she's employed as a governess to these two orphaned children who've been left in the care of their uncle, uh, who has no interest in bringing them up. So he packs them off to his country house right. uh, and employs the governess to take care of them. So off she goes to this house, which has in the middle of the country, in the middle of nowhere, which has a very small staff, and um, encounters certain problems. Yeah, OK. Um, I don't want you to say too much. I don't want you to ruin anything. I'm not ruining anything. But we you. know... I know it's a thriller, and it's quite yeah, a thrilling it's, it's, thriller. It's a, it's a ghost story, really. Yeah. I think that's the best way to describe it. It's a ghost story. Right. And is it... Is it, is it difficult to... I always imagine pulling off a, 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 a ghost story or a thriller or something live on stage. Must Has it got its own sort of uh, challenges? Um, it's a really good story. I mean, essentially, if you have a really good story, yeah. that's the basis for, you know, then the, the, a lot, half the work's done for you, really. Yeah. It, it's a very good script, and it's a very interesting script because it is slightly different from um, uh, scripts based on this story before. I don't think it's any more difficult, really, than any other kind of uh, any other kind of drama. Yeah. To be honest with you. Would you say it's okay for any age group, children? I mean. I oh, I'm going to consult with my uh, colleague here. Um, <laughs> I would say, what would you say the age would probably be sensible? Fourteen on. Fourteen. Yeah. I, I think I think we'd probably say fourteen up. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's quite it's quite an adult. There are quite adult issues dealt with in the play yeah um and and it's a bit it's a bit scary yeah um, so yes i think i think we're agreeing here that 14 is probably a, a good cut off age yeah I and mean, we had a thing in um you might have heard of it the weir uh, oh yes uh, what a wonderful play that is oh I, I and i interviewed one of the guys from that and i was i asked him the same thing and i and i had no idea until i went to see it how sort of Oh, it's 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 worse almost than watching a film. You'd think it'd be easier with a film to to, yes. to play thrilling anything horror horrific, but because it's live in front of you, and you're in the same room, aren't you? That's exactly. Yeah. Fantastic about theatre, really. Yeah. Um, the film obviously had it has its great qualities, but you are physically in the same room as the actors, and that's that's what makes. I mean, for me, I think that's what makes theatre so excited, and for us as well. Yeah. You know, because we're in the same room as the audience. Uh huh. Yeah. Could I ask you about, I mean, because if, if you're doing a brand new production, yeah. um, to, to sort of create a character is yeah. sort of in your hands, isn't it, as almost? And it's, um, I, I don't know if that's, is that easier to do than to play something that people might know the characters? Oh, no, it's, it's the best. Uh, I've done a lot of new work, actually, and it's my favourite. Yeah. Um, to actually be the first person to get hold of a character, uh -huh. particularly if you're in the rehearsal room with the writer, so that you're making a real contribution um, to the to the finished product, as it were. Yeah. That's that's tremendously exciting. Yeah. And which is not to say that uh, you know that I haven't enjoyed. I've been really lucky actually in in doing quite a wide range of work. So not to say that I haven't enjoyed doing Shakespeare, obviously. Yeah. Um, but no, doing new work is really exciting. This, of course, is not a new character. This is a, 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 the character I play, Mrs. Gross, is a very well-established character because she 
clearly appears in the original story. Uh-huh. Um, and although I had read the book many, many years ago, um, I deliberately didn't read it again just before this, or indeed watch any of the adaptations. Um, so it's kind of pretty new to me, pretty fresh for me. But, uh, of course, she has existed for quite some time, yeah. as a character, so... And Carly just touched on it there. It's quite a small cast, isn't it? Yes, yeah. There's only four of us. There's four of you. Does uh-huh. it, uh, I've read somewhere that, that there's no, there's no children. I mean, there's children in it, but there's no children. <laughs> there's no that, child yes, actors. That's absolutely correct. There are children in it, but there are no child actors. So, apart from the, the logistics of not touring with kids, is that, uh, is that a good way of doing it, do you think? Well, it, it's, it's kind of specific to this adaptation, I think. I mean... You, you couldn't actually do this adaptation with children. Right. Um, no, you couldn't. I'm just wondering if that's true. It is true. Um, <laughs> so I think I think it adds to it, really. Yeah. Right. And, and also logistically, yes, impossible to yeah to do this kind of touring with children. Yeah. I mean, you'd, ha- you'd have to... Some people do when they have uh, child actors in touring productions. Of course, they they tend to use children from the local area. Yeah. Um, but with parts, the size and the depth and the intensity of these, of these child parts, as it were, the children parts, that would be impossible. You Too much. You expect a child to, yeah. to do that. Yeah. So have you got a matinee today? Is that, is that uh, what's happening? We that? do. Yes, we have a matinee today. The last two performances in Guildford um, today. And then travelling over the weekend. And we're up with you in Mould, uh, which I'm really looking forward to. Fantastic. Um, I discovered... Well, I knew already that my father went to school in Ruthin. Oh, right. And when I was up there before, uh, and he was at Ruthin School. Oh. Uh, and I was able to visit the school and um, chat to them, and I've actually donated a, a cup to them that my father won when he was there. Superb. 19, uh, what would it have been, 1915, I think. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's that. That's a, that's a good reason to yeah, tour, isn't it? Yeah, great. And uh, yeah, it was really lovely, actually. Yeah. yeah. I was really surprised the place was still going. It was extraordinary. <laughs> yeah. 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 <laughs> well, have a, have a have a great rest of your run there, and uh, we look forward Thank to you seeing you. Much. Look forward to seeing you in uh, yeah, in North we'll Wales. Look forward to seeing you. Perfect. Okay. Thanks, Maggie. All the best. Really appreciate it. Okay. Take Thanks care. Bye. 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 So there you go, that is uh, Carly Norris and uh, Maggie McCarthy, both in this turn of the screw that is coming up to Theatre Cluid next week. 1st of May to the 5th of May. Support your local theatre, girls and boys. It won't be there forever if you don't. Brace yourself! It's Andy Snowden! Stage and stage and stage and screen! My day. Mrs. Robinson, you're trying to seduce me. And you will know my name is the law when I lay my vengeance upon thee. You ever seen a grown man naked? 105 FM. Here's Johnny. Life is a box of chocolates for us. You never know what you're going to get. Tell me about it. Stop. <laughs> Stage and scream!